Hey, Dr. Mike T. Nelson here, and I get this question a ton, so I wanted to do a video on it about what is metabolic flexibility related to a ketogenic diet. Because what I've heard from random sources is that if you do a ketogenic diet, you are increasing your metabolic flexibility, and that's actually false, and here's why. So metabolic flexibility, as you remember, is how well your body can use fat on this end of the spectrum, how well it can use carbohydrates for a fuel on that end of the spectrum, and how well can you switch back and forth between the use of fat and the use of carbohydrates. So what do we know about a ketogenic diet? We know that a ketogenic diet is very high in fat and very low in tasty carbohydrates. Which makes me put a little frowny face here. That's just me, though. So what are the pros of a ketogenic diet, right? Because everyone wants to say a ketogenic diet is the best thing ever or it's the worst possible thing ever. And the reality is neither one of those are true, and it depends on the context. So we know that if you do a ketogenic diet, that you will massively upregulate the body's ability to use fat. Uh, this has been shown by the FASTER study from Jeff Bullock, and they literally rewrote the textbook on how much fat your body can use in highly trained athletes who had been doing a ketogenic type approach for many, many, many months. So they're very well adapted to the keto end of the spectrum, and they were doing a moderate paced exercise. And that's pretty cool, right? So how often do you actually get to rewrite a physiology textbook? Not that often with something as basic as fat metabolism from a use standpoint. So that's pretty cool. The downside, however, is that if you do this, you start losing this end of the spectrum. So instead of being able to go all the way to use carbohydrates, you're way down here using fat and obviously some ketones but you can't quite get to the same end on the carbohydrate spectrum. Why? Well, part of it is your body is just not that used to running carbohydrates. You're sending a whole bunch of fat through the system. Yes, you are using ketones like beta-hydroxy, butyrate, and the other ones. And that's a benefit to increasing the use of fat and ketones. However, you're missing out on this kind of single-digit percentage on the end using carbohydrates because you haven't ran that carbohydrate machinery that much so the body will lose it temporarily over time so the main thing with that is an enzyme called PDH you can look up some research from Dr. Trent Stellingworth on that and this guy changes with a high fat diet uh, some studies show as fast as even a couple days and you start down regulating the high-end use of carbohydrates. So if you are a very competitive athlete and you want to win races and you get some testing done or you think that you're missing out on this end of the spectrum, you read some cool stuff from those nerds and you want to increase your metabolic flexibility, so you go and do, let's say, a ketogenic diet, you can upregulate the fat end of the spectrum. However, when you bring back your carbohydrates, you put them back in, your glycogen levels will go up. And even on this end, glycogen levels don't go down that much if your calories are sufficient. But because of changes to this PDH enzyme, pyruvate dehydrogenase, which is kind of like your gatekeeper to using carbohydrates via glycolysis, you're still going to be missing some speed and power on this end of the spectrum. So if you talk to those athletes, they feel like even in an endurance event, they went to drop the hammer and pass someone on a bike, they're just missing that top-end performance. So from a very competitive standpoint, they are missing out on this speed and power. And even longer endurance events, speed and power is a very important quality that you don't want to lose. Now, if you're not super competitive, and you're just kind of more recreationally lifting, and you're okay with a drop in carbohydrate metabolism on that end, then that's cool. Yeah, nothing. 
So just make sure that you know why you're doing each specific approach. So in summary, if you do a ketogenic type diet, are you increasing metabolic flexibility? No. You are increasing this end of fat metabolism, uh, probably to a dramatic degree. However, the cost or the gotcha is carbohydrate metabolism on the other end is going to go down in around the single digit percent. So your speed and power is going to drop. Again, if you're not a highly competitive athlete, maybe you don't care and you're okay with that trade-off, then that's up to you. Um, if you want to maintain that, then this is a time for another video, but you can get some of the same benefits by doing a period of fasting instead of doing a ketogenic approach, and that will actually increase metabolic flexibility on both ends of the spectrum. But again, different topic for a different time. So the big takeaway, doing a ketogenic diet, are you increasing metabolic flexibility, is half right. You increase the body's ability to use fat, which is one half of metabolic flexibility, but it comes at a decrease in the body's ability to fully use carbohydrates for speed and power.